What up, HyperChange? Today we're doing an update on Starlink, SpaceX's satellite internet service um, that is set to beam down internet to all around the world with this thousands and thousands of low Earth orbit satellites. Um, this has been launched to consumers about a year ago. It's the first like product from SpaceX that you can actually buy. Um, so this is potentially going to be a total game changer for the way internet connectivity works in our world. Maybe we could officially say bye to Comcast for some of us. Um, really exciting. But behind the scenes, I wanted to update y'all because I've been hearing some really interesting stuff about what SpaceX's team is working on to make this technology mainstream, make it more affordable, and make it work from their end as a financial, uh, sort of financially viable product. And so the first step is Dishy McDishface, this round thing that we saw um, with Starlink, which was that, you know, dish that you essentially put on your roof that would capture the internet service. So they were already on V2 of that sort of dish uh, version thing. And one thing you're going to think about a lot as I go through this episode is pace of innovation. SpaceX is constantly iterating, improving, making their things better. And this is just a huge example of that. So they had V2, which was already cheaper and they're trying to bring the cost downs of this and now there's apparently a v3 of the dishy mcdish face which i think they're gonna have to change the name of because apparently now it's sort of like a rectangle thing and i'll try and render it um so i did see a picture of it but i'm not allowed to show it so i will render it here of what i think it it looks like this is total speculation by the way but i think it's gonna be legit so v3 of this new system much cheaper to produce much simpler much easier to ship and built for automated production so it sounds like spacex which has been in the sort of beta program for space uh, starlink for this long um is sort of improving that final end product to really tailor it for the mass production um to really get this to go all the way and it sounds like on the back end now this new sort of version of the dish is much more profitable than any previous version and has performance improvements from what i'm hearing as well so so this is potentially the biggest product change we've seen in Starlink since the company came out with this service about a year ago. So I'm waiting anxiously for this to be officially announced by SpaceX or for them to be talking about this in the public because this sounds like a really big deal. But it's not just on the dishes that SpaceX is innovating. This is why the pace of innovation is insane. It's also on the, uh, the satellites themselves. So SpaceX recently said in a new filing with the FCC just a couple of weeks ago, they're working on something called Gen 2, next generation satellites. Um, these next generation satellites have different capabilities, including these laser systems that are gonna improve connectivity. And it also says the satellites will some be somewhat larger and generate more power, enabling them to support expanded capabilities now and accommodate additional payloads in the future. So there's an interesting clue about how they're iterating on that satellite technology to potentially open up new business lines, partner with other companies, or do more, more things. These new satellites as well, they're not going to, right now, they're launching them with uh, the Falcon 9 rocket, which shoots about 60 of these satellites up in the sky. And remember, SpaceX needs 10,000 or tens of thousands of these in the long run, and they're probably constantly going to need, need to be replacing them as well. So you think about launching them as a critical component of the cost structure of this equation. And now SpaceX is also saying they're going to switch to their Starship rocket, their much bigger rocket, which is actually going to take us to Mars to start launching these satellites as well and they're gonna be able to launch 400 of satellites at a time with this new Starship capability. Another interesting piece of news here is Starlink recently filed with the FCC earlier this summer um, to basically allow for testing of the Starlink satellites on aircraft and sea vessels. We're talking about boats and planes to begin testing this technology. Um, around the same time, The Verge also reported that SpaceX's Starlink was in talks for several with several different airlines for in-flight Wi-Fi. I think this would be a huge um, sort of awesome game changer. I've, I've been struggling with plain Wi-Fi for years. It's just not that dope. So if Starlink comes in with that, that would be epic. But this just is an example of yet another other application of this technology. And it's so interesting because now we're trying to figure out, and ARK Invest put out a, a fascinating report about this, trying to address the addressable market for Starlink. Let's talk about the financials and the business behind it here, of course, since we're on hyperchange. But um, Starlink, you know, originally built as a way to connect the unconnected, to connect people in rural areas. And they've been doing some amazing projects like that, you know, reaching out to communities who don't have connectivity connectivity, helping them get online. That's an amazing sort of, you know, uh, I don't want to say charitable, but like, you know, invest in the future you believe in, changing the world for the better future that Starlink has is this massive, you know, they even call it like the homework gap. Like if you're not connected to the internet, it's really tough to keep up as a student and be educated in this new digital world. And so by connecting everybody and having global internet, Starlink is poised to change that in a huge way. But from a business angle, you're thinking, wait, you know, connecting these rural communities isn't the most lucrative part of the connectivity or internet segment. And so as well, even though Elon Musk has been downplaying the ability for Starlink to compete with cellular uh, speeds, you know, in urban rural areas or fiber and if you're in a huge city with fiber um, it seems like starlink is gaining a lot of traction so maybe for the fastest internet in the highest density urban areas it's not going to replace it but for almost everything else starlink seems like an incredible option we're already hearing about so many different stories i've heard through the grapevine of my friends of people who maybe they live in rural places but they're normal big cities um, maybe they're on the suburbs 
and they're switching from their current provider to Starlink and seeing much better speeds for almost the same price. And so this is really impressive. So I think the addressable market for Starlink to me is in the hundreds of millions, multi hundreds of millions of users. That's just from the consumer end uh, of what we're talking about. And then you also have, you know, deals with planes, uh, in-flight Wi-Fi, ships, cruises, you know, governments, um, armies, navies, all that sort of stuff, I think is gonna layer on in sort of this B2B internet segment that they're gonna work on as well. Additionally, in another terms of, of pace of innovation is that terminal um, that, that gets shipped to you. Um, you have to pay, pay a $500 upfront fee to get that. Well, apparently Gwyn Shotwell was saying that they're be, gonna be able to cut that in half and then eventually cut that in half again. So you think about Starlink right now, costs about $500 upfront, then $99 a month. It sounds like they're gonna be able to at least cut that upfront cost dramatically down to about $125 in the long run, and then maybe cut that monthly cost down as well, therefore expanding the addressable market. And so now let's talk about how big this is as a business today um, and how big it'll get. So Elon Musk said that Starlink recently confirmed that 100,000 terminals had shipped, or let's equate that to about 100,000 customers, all paying $99 a month, 100 times 99 times 12. We're looking at 119 million in annual recurring revenue today from Starlink from just those first 100,000 users. So this is actually above my estimates, which I had them hitting 100,000 uh, subscribers by the end of 2021. It sounds like they've already hit that. Um, so I did change that in my estimates to 200,000 by the end of this year. I don't know, I'm just kind of guessing, but I left everything else because I th frankly think these are really aggressive um, cost projections that I have. And I actually already have them scaling down to 90 bucks a month monthly fee, but scaling up to a million users by 2022, 4 million, 10 million, 25 million, um, you know, so, that seems like a lot of people, but 25 million is still just such a small fraction of the global population. And if you think about the addressable market of Starlink, like it's literally gonna be available in every single country. Um, I don't think 25 million is an unreasonable number. Maybe 50, 100 million in the long run is totally possible, eventually connecting Mars and, and the, you know, Earth. I think, you know, it's endless. And you have Elon Musk uh, scheming on this. So who knows where Starlink will go from here? And then you have little things like, additional payload on the satellites? Could that unlock a new business model? I don't know, there's tons of different ways to look at it, but just from this consumer angle, at 25 million uh, subscribers paying $65 a month, we're looking at $19.5 billion in revenue. So even though Starlink today is just generating about 110, 120 million, this is gonna scale rapidly. I mean, they just built that in a year in beta. And so remember, this is recurring revenue as well. So I think Starlink is quickly poised to hit billions and billions of revenue. You know, SpaceX and its most recent private funding round was valued about $74 billion. I think Starlink alone will be valued at $74 billion or more in just two to three years if they continue executing. And so the potential for this is staggering. And what's to me the most exciting sort of cherry on top of all of this is Starlink is owned by SpaceX. SpaceX has huge ambitions to colonize Mars, to settle us there, you know, to expand our species and get, take over a new planet. And that's just so exciting and exploring the stars and eventually building this sci-fi reality of where we're living in like Star Wars, we're jetting off the different planets, um, we're living across the galaxy and solar system, so so epic. And Starlink is the financial catalyst to actually make that work. In a leaked Wall Street Journal article four years ago, they detailed plans about how Starlink was really the key financial driver for SpaceX and was expected to give them the positive cash flow necessary to fund Mars. And so I think the word is gonna spread here. First of all, you've had them generate 100 million plus in recurring revenue, a backlog of hundreds of thousands of customers with zero marketing, just like Tesla, SpaceX and Te uh, Starlink does zero marketing. It's all spread through word of mouth because people love the product and service. They wanna support the mission. They wanna be a part of this exciting future. And so I think that storyline will continue. You wanna fund Mars, do it by getting dope Starlink internet. And that'll help give the cash flow to this company, SpaceX, to develop you know, and colonize Mars. And so I just think that's super duper exciting. And that's part of the storyline that will get baked in to, to why people are supporting Starlink. There's a true why behind the company. And even in more recent years, you're talking about the Starlink IPO, which Elon Musk says will happen and they will spin it out of SpaceX. And this is an even more genius sort of evolution of how SpaceX and Elon are thinking about monetizing that Starlink project to be able to fund Mars faster. Because instead of just using that upfront cash flow from Starlink's, you know, 100 million, couple billion dollars in revenue, taking that profit and giving it to SpaceX, they can start selling portions of the company of Starlink and get a huge multiple on that revenue. Recurring revenue right now in the market, 20, 30, 50 X multiples, depending on the quality and growth rate of it. So SpaceX could be getting 20, 30 to $50 to one. And that's on top of revenue, not just profit to be able to fund SpaceX. So I think this is a, the way this all plays out is Starlink gets spun out of SpaceX for about a 20, 25, 
$30 billion valuation in a year or two. Maybe that's too low because demand is so high, but then that valuation, they could sell just 10% of the company, raise two to $3 billion, fund that right into SpaceX to keep developing. Then Starlink doubles, $60, $80 billion. You sell another 10% of the company or just 5% to get more billions of dollars. SpaceX could still control over 50% of Starlink and be extracting tens of billions of dollars from this entity over the next five to 10 years, funding their Mars ambitions. So I think this is such a beautiful little case study to follow. And it's amazing that we can all be a part of it by getting Starlink internet. So if you have Starlink internet, let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, this new version of Dishy McDish face or Flatty McFlat face or Roundy Rectangle McRectangle face, epic. Let me know if you have any info on that, if you hear anything about it in the comments below. This is Hyperchange with the Starlink update. See y'all next time. Peace.